Hello, and welcome to today's Energy Magazine exclusive author interview. I'm your host, Katherine Krupka, director of the Energy Medicine Professional Association. I absolutely know you are going to love the dis this discussion about some practical, powerful manifesting tools for all of us as conscious entrepreneurs. Our guest, Shantini Raja, is writing and manifesting mentor and an energy practitioner. Based in beautiful Southeast Asia, she loves helping conscious entrepreneurs all around the world to find their true voice and manifest a life and business they love. She's a trained physicist and engineer, and she brings together a unique alchemy of science and spirituality. She successfully worked on both million dollar digital launches and some of her clients are the biggest names in personal growth and healing, like our best-selling author and legendary medicine, energy medicine teacher, Donna Eden, and a world leader in transformational education, Mind Valley. Shantini is also a sought after ghostwriter who's penned best selling personal growth books for well known authors. Over the years, her writing has appeared all over the place in Forbes, Hay House, Elle, Harper's Bazaar, and Sounds True. Plus, now Shantini has her own wonderful book out with the very enticing title Manifest Anything You Want. Shantini, welcome. I'm so excited for our readers to get a taste of your work and to just enjoy your beautiful light. Oh my goodness, Catherine, I'm so excited. I'm here. I can barely sit still right now. <laughs> I'm so happy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's a joy and you're bringing lots of energy to the room. So thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I know our Energy Magazine readers are just going to be thrilled with all of what you have to share. The whole idea of really manifesting and creating for our own mission-based and heart-centered businesses is really a big deal. I'd love to just dive right into the challenges here and ask, why do you think that so many people, maybe even most people, get mixed results when they're manifesting? What what do you think is missing in the equation? Oh, that is a that is a great question to start with, because you know, with manifesting, as we know, anyone who knows even a little bit about manifesting knows that if you're just typing, uh, type in, you know, like Google this, how to manifest, fill in the blank you're going to come up with like, you're going to see millions upon millions of results in there. And you know what, Catherine, I, I love it. Like, first of all, let me just put in a caveat here that I love all of what I like to call like the mainstream Googleable manifesting uh, techniques and tools, meaning the stuff that pops up, right? When you search for something on Google and it's great. Affirmations, for example, um, you know, vision boards, visualizations. These are the some of the main tools that are thought, uh, that I call them mainstream manifesting tools for people to create what they want in their life, to attract what they desire. And in the, in the case of entrepreneurs that, would, that might be more clients, uh, a higher income level, all of that, all of that delightful, delicious stuff, right? And here's the thing. What happens then is, um, there is this tendency, and I, I'm going to like confess, I was one of these people, where I would be focused on getting all of these so-called tools and techniques right, like like applying it exactly as is instructed, have like focusing on how to get the like the the most fabulous vision board and how to get it like exactly exactly right. How do I follow all of the instructions so it's perfect? So what happens is we all, and this is very, very common in my experience, we tend to start focusing on how well we are working with the tools or how good, how well we're doing with the tools versus who we are being when we are working with those tools, which is a small, but I would say significant difference. It's that, it's that tiny thing but it makes all the difference so what I like to say Catherine is like with vision boards for example who are you being how do you feel as you put on like for example let's say you want a house by the beach a beautiful gorgeous home by the beach I think a lot of people want this and <laughs> that's why I'm using it and when you're like okay let me look for these images whether it's on a Pinterest online or you know a physical board when you put it on there and and you and you think oh that's great but then when you look at it and it starts to feel like, oh, that's so far away. 
you know, I don't feel connected to that. Oh, how am I ever going to make that happen? So we forget about how we feel as we create these, as we use affirmations. I am, you know, I'm confident when you're not feeling, that's not going to work. So to me, the missing piece that I want to highlight here, and that's what my book is like focused on this, the missing piece is manifesting, successful manifesting, successful speedy manifesting is about not what you're doing, but who you are being as you manifest. So yeah, <laughs> that's that's what I, I know to be true. Yeah. Boy, that's a, it's a huge difference, right? I mean, depending on the energy I'm coming from or who I'm being as I'm doing something, it, it, that makes complete sense. I mean, it seems like you could veer off in a completely different direction based yes, on that. Absolutely. And a big part of it is a sense of feeling safe, feeling mm -hmm. that feeling of safety, feeling safe to want what you want and to receive what you desire. And, you know, that might sound strange to a lot of people because safety and manifesting isn't usually like they're not usually in the same conversation, right? But it's huge because it's like, where is your nervous system? Where, what's your energy system doing at that point? When you're, we know what we desire. We may love the house by the beach, for example. But when, when you don't feel like, oh my gosh, it doesn't feel, you know, I'm starting to get stressed and anxious around it. That safety flies out the window, and, you know, that doesn't, that that's not good for alignment, for connecting, because the universe, high, a higher power, whoever, all of this, this higher power that we believe in, most of us, uh, I would say that that alignment needs to come in because that, that power is love. And when we are, it is just pure unconditional love and when we are not in that alignment when we're in that anxiety and that stress we are not in alignment and a big piece of coming back into that alignment is to cultivate that and learn to generate inner safety wow okay i could go off on a on a, on a whole on a whole big discussion there but uh, but we would be talking, we'd be doing your whole book tonight. And I, I'm not, I'm not sure we're going to be able to do that, but I will encourage people to check out your book because I know there's a lot of great stuff in there. I I want to pick up on a, on a theme that you had brought up um, about toxic positivity, which is a challenging term and something that I, I think can kind of be charged for people. Talk to us a little bit about what that means to you and how does that get in our way of, of attracting or manifesting what it is that we're wanting. Oh, okay. So yes, that's another word that you don't like. That's another term that you don't often see in, you know, a manifesting book or anywhere that anyone, when, yeah, people don't talk about it. And I feel like it, they don't talk about it enough. So here's the thing, a big theme in the manifesting space, which most people understand this or know this is that, uh, positive thinking, like getting into the space of being in a positive, you know, like, like immersing yourself in positive energy. And a big part of that is positive thinking. Now, positive thinking is, is, is a wonderful concept, but it can also be, you know, can be a little bit of a minefield, which is where positive thinking, uh, sorry, toxic positivity, I want to say comes in. So at its core, um, Toxic, I'm going to like, I'll dive into the differences between the two. So toxic positivity at its core is about saying and doing, you know, anything that you need to say and do to yourself and others to like come across and like to, you know, radiate that positive thing and to kind of tell yourself, oh, you know, uh, I'm good. You know, you're, you're not feeling it. Again, this like circles back to our first you know, what I said earlier, you're not feeling it, but it's like you feel, oh no, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm slipping away. Something something you don't enjoy happened. Like maybe you just found out you didn't get a promotion at work or something. And rather than like feeling into it and allowing yourself to feel what you feel, which is natural. We're human. We are meant to experience the entire spectrum of emotions that are out there. So for example, you're disappointed, you're sad, but then you're like, oh, I don't want to like stay in this box, this negative energy, <laughs> these negative emotions. So you know what? That's okay. I'm fine. You know, you tell yourself things like that. 
that is moving into the space of toxic positivity because it it's it basically essentially asks you to snap out of whatever unhappiness anger insecurity whatever you feel but i'm going to come you know i'm going to say this right now the language of the universe is the language of emotions and just as we are you know yes we can't hide what we truly feel to ourselves we can't hide what we truly feel from the universe and right that i hope that makes sense so the more we tell ourselves we feel a certain way but you know but we don't the more we try to force a force a positive high vibrational emotion by practicing toxic positivity the more we are disconnecting from our natural manifesting power so i feel like it's a big piece again it's nuanced um it feels like you're being positive but it's so important to ask yourself how do i really feel and to not i'm not saying like you need to like stay in that space i'm just saying feel into it feel what you feel honor that practice what you need to practice i have some practices in my book but you know anything you you love like tapping or anything that helps you genuinely process the emotion come out of it and then step into a genuine positive feeling um so yeah that's that's where it, uh, yeah that's that's a big piece that i like to highlight when it comes to what gets in the way of manifesting <laughs> it feels so important and and definitely aligns with what we were talking about in your first response about not being in alignment right if i'm trying to fake positivity then <laughs> i'm definitely out of alignment right and you and you're absolutely 100% right and i want to say that a lot of the time we don't even realize we, that it's mm. fake we are just thinking you know we're just feeling like oh i need to be positive so i have like for example uh you know uh i like to say like for example um you want to learn how to play the violin and you know you're having difficulty learning how to play, play the violin this example is also in my book so you know for example negative thinking would be oh you try for a day or two and then you're like i you know i knew i'd suck at this <laughs> so i'm going to give up okay that's negative and then positive to, positive thinking would be um you know what you know i'm not good at this right now but i'll give it my best shot and i'll go i'm going to keep practicing cuz i love the violin and you know maybe i'll get better let me keep trying that's positive toxic positivity is you know if i can't do this it's because it's not meant to be mm. so it seems <laughs> on the surface it doesn't seem like like it's all bad but it yeah it's not a good place to be <laughs> so yeah <laughs> I I can see how that's not a great place to come from as we're seeking to create. And yes. that is a nuanced distinction. I I really appreciate you sharing that example because that is that's a very nuanced. Shift. Exactly. Yeah. It is it is a journey <laughs> to learn how to recognize that within ourselves. Beautiful. So uh, also one of the um things that I know you share, I looked at this on your website. Uh, and that looks so powerful is your one healing breath micro action manifesting tool. So I'm intrigued by this idea of micro action and please tell us more about this and how we can use it. Oh okay, I love talking about the one healing breath. So um thank you Catherine. So um I micro action. So two parts to that. So first thing I just want to give a little bit of an overview of, of what the one healing breath is. So as I as I said before, safety is a big piece. And let me just say I was, you know, people are born on different ends of the spectrum when it comes to anxiety and all of that. And let me just say, I'm going to confess again that I was not born I I'm just not naturally calm. I tend to <laughs> I, you know, I, I have an anxious personality. People who know me, I'm like, go, go, go. You know, what's, you know, I've got to like prepare for everything. And, oh, you know, I'm going to like freak out. And uh, yeah, I do tend to get into that space a little too easily. And, you know, there's like a whole history. And a lot of us, of course, have experienced trauma in our lives, which does obviously does not help. It just exacerbates the situation, the anxiety. So anyway, um, the, the one healing breath a practice interestingly enough dropped in for me out of nowhere like it was i was like 
struggling. It was at a time in my life where I was on the on the precipice of of doing something special with my business, online business, and there was a lot of anxiety. As you can imagine, baked into that, how am I going to do this? I have no experience being an entrepreneur. I had none at that time. And I do not come from a family line of entrepreneurs. Here in Asia, uh, you are encouraged to be a doctor or an engineer or a lawyer. I was an engineer and I chose a different path. And, you know, it was like, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, what are you doing here? So I had a lot of like resistance, not just within myself, but, you know, people were like concerned for me. People who love me were concerned for me. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so anyway, I was anxious. So um, I was like in that space. And one day I just had this divine, you know, in spiritual circles, they call it a divine download. It just dropped in. And I just heard the words, Catherine, one healing breath. I heard it in my right ear. I heard it. I was just in the middle of my kitchen. It was an ordinary day. And I was like, as soon as it came in, it was, I knew what it was. And I knew what I was supposed to do with it. So what it is, is it is this, this little thing that it takes just 30 seconds, a minute tops, but usually even less than 30 seconds to do. And it's about tuning in to genuine positive energy. So you can choose any, any energy you want. It could be calm, it could be joy, it could be patience, it could be love, whatever it is. And you tune in and there's like a little process in there on how to tune into that genuine positive energy. And you breathe it in, you breathe it in, allow it to like, just like flow through your entire body and you breathe it out and it helps on so many levels. It helps with the anxiety. It helps connect you with higher vibrational energies in a genuine way, not in a toxic, positive way. <laughs> and it takes, and I call it micro action manifesting, Catherine, because uh, micro action manifesting too, because it is micro, it is, it, it, takes seconds to do and what I believe and this is true I've done my research with neuroscience our brains are wired to learn we learn well when it's small moments many times mm -hmm. uh, repeatedly rather than trying to like practice a meditation for like 60 minutes and like 48 of those minutes you're like why am I not calm right we don't want that's not super helpful <laughs> So with the one healing breath, micro action manifesting, and I also call it a micro action meditation tool sometimes because it brings you back to center. It brings in that high vibrational energies mm. and it allows you to stay. And as you keep practicing, you stay in that space longer and longer, even though it's just seconds and you can do it anytime during the day um, or whenever you need it. It is it is incredibly effective, I won't say. And over time, you find yourself becoming a much calmer, your baseline energy will be a lot calmer, much more joyful. So yeah, so that's- the Wow, one. I love the idea of this brief, repeated micro action and, and sort of the, I don't know, almost the idea coming to my mind is like compounding interest and the yes. way that, that builds for us, yes? I love what you said. That is perfect. That is exactly it. Compounding interest in positivity, genuine positivity and in your skills in manifesting. Because in that way, what you're doing is you're not just manifesting as an activity, you're becoming a manifester. So things start to happen for you in line with what it is that you desire. So I love it. I, I just Wow. Love you know, it. that really feels like a like an important point to highlight, Chantini, is this the idea that you just shared about becoming a manifester and not just manifesting, right? Exactly. That sort of sense that if we are more consistently in that energy or in that yeah. flow, we're almost automatically Yes. Is automatically isn't the quite with quite the right word. But we're 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 almost effortlessly manifesting yeah. rather than sitting and focusing and doing exactly. all the things like you were talking about at the beginning that we sort of exactly. become the energy mm -hmm. of manifestation. Yes, I love that you brought up that point because that is the whole point. It is about becoming because then things happen for you, and you're not, you're not even like necessarily doing a vision board or an affirmation, but somehow things just like you know magically 
there are synchronicities. You're like, you just like, people start saying, oh my gosh, you're so lucky. How did that happen? <laughs> right? So th that's what we want. And, and, you know, I like to say that the universe loves, uh, the universe always dreams a bigger dream for us than we can possibly dream for ourselves. And when you become a manifester, the universe presents to you what you desire far more. Like, for example, even with my book, I never dared to dream that I would be a traditionally published author. And I I, I always knew I wanted to write a book. And I was like, oh, I was all set to write it, uh, self-publish it. But, you know, I'm not. I'm not in the United States. I am an unknown here, way out here in Southeast Asia. And you well in, who is like, they're a very respected and uh, publisher in, you know, worldwide. Yes. They offered me a book deal. I was like, thank you, universe. It was just amazing, Catherine. That, that was a big part of, that is an example of what can happen. Because I didn't even, I didn't have it on my vision board. I did not. And it was, it happened. So, yeah. Totally right. Becoming a manifester is important. What a what a that that just that shifts the whole idea for me. That distinction feels so powerful and not so commonly addressed. I, right. I think that's a big takeaway for for me and hopefully for a lot of our readers. That's um I mean that's going to sit with me for a while. So <laughs> I love I love um. I mean, the vast majority of our readers are practitioners, right? So most of us do have our own healing practices, which are businesses. And when it comes to manifesting for our businesses, what are some of the common pitfalls you see and how might we get around them? Ooh, good one. This is a juicy one. <laughs> because there's like the pitfalls overall, but I would say for when it comes to businesses, there are some like extra special <laughs> attention that needs to be paid <laughs> to some of the deeper pitfalls that we can like drop into without realizing. It. Okay, so one of the big ones that I see all the time is um, I like to call it contract. Like I call it this is like a block. I would consider it a manifesting block, and I call it contracted manifesting. So I would say. A big piece, like for in, in business, right, Catherine, a lot of the time we are encouraged to look at numbers, to look at data. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is important. We do need to obviously look at numbers, to look at data, all of that. We need to look at our income statements, our budgets, all of that, those, those you know, exciting stuff. So I, <laughs> so I want to say here, in the context of manifesting, however, um, a lot of manifesting teachers and, and you know, uh, authors would tell you to like think about in, in the context of business, they would say things like, oh, you know, um, for example, I want to, do you want to manifest like uh, $100,000 by the end of the year or whatever? So as you can tell, there's 100000 and then at the end of the year. So let's assume that we are in July now. So that's like about six months. So in six months, you know, you, you end the year with a $100,000 year, right? There is a huge issue with that that I want to highlight here. Mm -hmm. So because it's, it is, I call it contracted because the numbers and the data can start to feel super restrictive. Because what we're doing again here is we start to focus on, oh my gosh, it's 100,000. I want it, yes, I love it, I desire it. But, you know, end of the year is just six months away. How can I make it happen? How do I do this? And, you know, whoops, we pop out of that beautiful, safe, positive manifesting experience and feeling. We are out of it. We are in anxiety. We are in stress. We start checking our, you know, every week we're like, <gasps> you know, I just made like $100 this week. Oh, no, you know, all of that stuff. That is an issue. And what I like to do instead is mm -hmm. to touch lightly on the numbers. So you do know, you. it's fine to have that desire. I want to have a hundred thousand, a six-figure business by the end of this year. That's great. And at the same time, touch lightly and then move into a vision of what that would bring to you, what that would feel like. Because what we want is we want to move away from, from having those restrictive numbers and just getting super caught up in it and to stay in the feeling 
of what that would feel like. Because who knows, Catherine, you might, we might hit that $100,000 in three months. <laughs> As I said, the universe dreams. Why, why get fixated on the numbers? Know your numbers, have that in your heart, but at the same time, go back into that feeling, step back to that feeling of what that would feel. Like. What does a $100,000 at the end of the year feel like? That's a really interesting question. What does that feel like? How does that feel to you? Um, that, that's a big piece. That's one of the, the pitfalls. Another one that I like to say is some people notice this. Uh, when they get into manifesting mode, and, and this actually happened to someone I know, uh, <laughs> he was like trying to manifest, uh, you know, more clients for his business and obviously, you know, more income. And he started to notice that, um, you know, his business kind of stayed the same. It, it kind of slid backward even <laughs> a little bit, but, and he was doing all of the things like the affirmations and the vision, vision board. But interestingly enough, his sister's business started to take off. <laughs> so I call this, I call this, this is something that, you know, might not seem like it's common, but it's pretty common. People, a lot of people notice this, that it's other things, good things start happening around them, not necessarily what they want. And I call this proxy manifesting. So what's happening is <laughs> you are inadvertently manifesting or others, you you know, it's not wrong. It's great. I mean, of course, we want people, other people, to to succeed too, and at the same time, we would love that for ourselves. So now, if that's if that starts to happen, we notice that a big piece would be to look within, because there's a part of us then that says, you know what, I don't deserve this thing that I desire. You know what, that's not for me. But you know, my sister or whoever it is, my best friend, oh, they are, they, you know, they deserve it. So a lot of the time we are, you know, that's just who we are. We we find that we can love others freely and unconditionally and really openly. And when it comes to ourselves, it's a whole other ball game, right? So I want to say the tool for this is this little thing that I call um, um, um how to be what how to be it's it's a how to be your own best friend that's right that's the tool be your own best friend too so how that works is when you start to feel into that space of you know i want to i want this business to you know hit this income mark or i want more clients and you start feeling blue and down and whatever it is tune into it and then ask yourself you know what would i say to my best friend what would I feel for my best friend? Wouldn't you or, or your sister, whoever you love, it doesn't have to be your best friend, it can be whoever that you truly love. What would I say to them? How would I feel for them? Don't I think like you, and for sure we would be like, my best friend deserves this. My mom deserves that. My sister deserves everything she wants and more. And we don't feel that sadly often for ourselves. So that's the be your own best friend tool. So these are, Two of the pieces, two two pitfalls. One pretty pretty, uh, you know, mainstream. A lot of people understand it, and the proxy manifesting is subtle, but it happens really often. <laughs> it does. Well, and it's interesting. I appreciate you mentioning that because it's not even something I would really even think to look for, right? I think that's an idea that most of us aren't even familiar with. Oh yeah, but it's interesting. It does happen. I mean, even you when you observe you might notice that it is actually because a lot of the time people for example want to manifest a soulmate and then someone in their lives find someone and not themselves so it's not and, and it's great again it is a wonderful thing good right and then at the same time let's also give ourselves what we deserve what we need wow that's beautiful and such a great insight uh for those of us, for our readers and for all of us who are business owners and practitioners to really keep an eye out for those pitfalls and 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 to use the tools that you shared to navigate them. Oh. I also wanted to ask about a manifesting avatar. You've talked about that and I'd love to hear about how we might use that to help elevate our manifesting skills for our businesses and for our lives. Oh, oh my gosh, Catherine. Okay, so this one is a very popular concept. A lot of people have come back to me you know, reading my book and stuff. And they're like, we love that manifesting avatar because the avatar works. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, I think you probably have heard of this. And I think a lot of 
uh, our readers would have heard of this, um, the future self, the concept of the future self, right, Catherine? So the future self, obviously, is a just in case someone doesn't know what I'm talking about, the future self is this, uh, this version of you in, in the space of manifesting, it would be the version of you that already has everything that you desire to manifest, right? The house, the car, the soulmate, the whatever, the, the charity. Like in my case, a big piece for me is to be able to donate to animal charities without holding back. That is a big piece. I love animal. I love them. And, um, you know, I want to help them. So, yeah. So that's like that version of you that has all of that is doing all of that. And then a lot of teachers, manifesting teachers talk about visualizations with the future self. So you visualize, You a, bi a big technique around that would be to get into this visualization space, visualize this future self so you can connect with that energy. And the idea is that brings the energy forward and you feel connected to that version of you and therefore you'll be able to manifest, you know, a lot more easily. Um, but here's the thing, I was a huge, and I still am actually, um, and I used to do a lot of the work around the visualize. I used to love it. First of all, one thing that was a big drawback was it took a, it took a big chunk of my time. Mm. I mean, there were some visualizations that were 45 minutes and an hour and all of that stuff. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so the anxiety again. Anyway, so I loved it, but <laughs> that piece was there. And when I came out of it, I loved it while I was in it. And when I stepped out of that visualization, it felt faded and it was far away. So the future self just felt like, okay, sure, I love that, but you know, that's not me right now. So what the man so this is where the manifesting avatar comes in. <laughs> so the manifesting avatar um, on at its core symbolizes the journey of bringing the energy and essence of your future self into the physical realm of your present self. So it, the manifesting avatar is the bridge between the two. It's it's the version of you that you can bring through that has the energy of the future self that you can channel now in the moment. So for I'm going to go ahead and say that right now, I am channeling my manifesting avatar, meaning that, for example, in my life, my, my business life, I really want to have this ability to stand up, to speak up, to be on camera, to enjoy myself on camera and to meet lovely people like you, Catherine. I'm so glad I have that on my um, manifesting desires list because I get to meet lovely people. I've been having a wonderful time. But that is not like something that my, um, my what can I say, my, my, my ordinary everyday self, my present self would choose. It's not something like I wake up in the morning like, oh, let me get on camera. Let me <laughs> be seen by this huge audience of people i'm excited some people are that way but that's not me so but i do understand that it's important like you know as part of being a person who wants to you know wants to build a successful business being on camera speaking to people so that was on my list so with the manifesting avatar and there's a process to it catherine i won't go into it it's like this process it's in my book as well but it's basically a way to bring that energy, what happens is there's an instantaneous um, symbolic. So there's a symbol that you use that allows you to connect into that energy instantly and to channel that energy. The version of me that can speak on camera, that can enjoy myself with you. I brought her in before I got on um, on the call today with you. And that is what the manifesting it, avatar does, which is a little bit different from the future self. It brings the energy of the future self into the now so you can live as your future self now. <laughs> wow. So that feels, this is the first um, I've heard of anything like this. This feels incredibly powerful because if I the future self can, like you were saying, feel very distant, right? It's, yes. it's still hypothetical. It's still a yes. concept. It's still a dream. But this avatar feels like, like a more solidified yes. element. And if that comes into my body now, yes. then not only, tell me if I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, not only am I experiencing that now, like you are so beautifully doing on camera today, but would I not then be also creating from that oh. energy, right? Oh my gosh. Ding, ding, ding. You totally nailed it. I love it. You totally nailed 
found it. You're so got it. You're embodying it exactly. And you're bringing, so by doing that and in, in, in a safe way, obviously, because the theme here is safety all the time, mm -hmm. not in a way that feels like, you know, fake it till you make it. It's not that at all. It's genuine. You feel good about it. You're right. That's what happens. You're bringing it, you're merging it. You're bringing that future manifested life into your present because you're embodying your future self through your manifesting out. Wow. Okay. So now I'm, I'm very, my whole system is charged right now. There's so much energy in what you're sharing. I, I, I love it. Uh, is there anything else you would like to share with our energy magazine readers of, that to help them manifest for their own businesses and lives? Oh, oh my gosh. I just want to say that, you know, the fact that you are an energy ma uh, magazine reader and that you are doing this work in the world, either, you know, for yourself or with other people, I feel like, you know, this is this is part of my dream and my vision, which is to that people who are in this space, who are, who are in, the serve, in, in the space of helping and being of service to others, whether it's your family or friends or, you know, clients and customers as well, these are the people who, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, Catherine, who deserve the most, to deserve everything they desire, who deserve the abundance. And I mean abundance in all its forms, money, um, you know, income, all of that, as well as, you know, health, love, all of it. Because here's the thing, we are the people who will share it and I, and I like to reinforce this a lot of the time because people who are loving and kind tend to forget about themselves. But I want to say this is a motto that I live by. When we win, when, when I win, we all win. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when we manifest our dreams, everybody wins because we are not, we are going to share it. It's going to go out there. We are gonna. We are not gonna be like, oh, I want this, and I, that's just not who we are. And I'm gonna include everyone listening or watching, uh, and everyone who reads and uh, energy magazine. It's in that space. That's the community, um, and I love this community. I love them. I love them. Those are um, amazing and inspiring parting words. And uh, again, get me very excited about what's uh, what's possible and how I might even tweak my own manifesting. So. I really, Shantini, I want to thank you so very much for joining us uh, with such beautiful energy and all your amazing wisdom. Uh, please do check out her book and I think everyone will enjoy it. I know I certainly will myself. Shantini, thank you so very much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Catherine. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you to all our readers and I look forward to seeing you again soon. <laughs>